My name is Spencer Martin. I am the Director of Athletic Bands at the University of Idaho in Moscow. I am also here with help from Vader Percussion. And today we're going to talk about some basics of hand technique and, and percussion technique and things that can just kind of help um, public school educators where, you know, if you have a gigantic band of 80 or 90 and, and you need to do quick things to help your percussionist, things that you can see, this is kind of who this video is, is geared towards. And I want to preface too that there's a million ways to skin a cat. There are many different ways to teach these things. I just hope that you can pull something from this and add it as a tool to your toolbox. The big thing that here at the University of Idaho that we like to talk about is making sure that you play in a natural body position. The more naturally the position you're in, the better you're going to play. And it really starts from how you stand and your elbow position. So really your best way to stand are your feet shoulder width apart. But the big thing to look about, especially as an educator, is to look at where your students' elbows are. And they need to be just in a natural position right next to their body. Some things that you can see, if a student is standing too close, their elbows are too far back. Or if they're too far away, their elbows are too far forward. So just as long as it's just relaxed and down like this. The next thing to think about is just raising your arms just from the elbow and being in this natural position. And there's, there's two things that I like to look at for health of your students. And they're the angles of where your wrist is. You want the wrist when you're at rest to be pretty much straight with the forearm and you want your wrist here to be pretty much straight this way as well. Mistakes that you will see if the drum is too low, you will notice that their, their wrist is already fully engaged. There's already tension there. If it's too high, again, their wrist is already engaged and this is causing tension. Also thinking about this wrist health here, that if the sticks are tilted like this, there's tension there, there's tension there. The problem becomes is everyone's hands and arms are shaped a tiny bit differently, so you can't say it has to look exactly like this. You have to ask the student, is your wrist straight here and here? Is everything relaxed? And if so, then they really should be able to play well and everything should be working in their favor. When we're talking about now where to hold the stick, some people talk about the fulcrum, which is great. I like to talk about nodal points, and I'm, I'm just a drummer, I'm no scientist, but there are basically two places on this drumstick that don't resonate. They're called nodal points. They're about a third of the way in. Imagine this as if it's a xylophone bar or a marimba bar, and you imagine those cords that go through. Those are going through the nodal points so that that bar gets the maximum amount of resonance. Drumsticks are the same way. So if I hold it on the nodal point, and my assistant comes over and starts playing, you can hear that pitch. Now she's going to continue to play and I'm going to move off the nodal point. See it go away. So that nodal point, about right here, that's where I'm going to put my thumb and my first finger. So you could call that the fulcrum, I like to call it the nodal point. Now these are quick things that you can help your students that, that they can just know almost like a call and response. The first thing are the back of the hands. The back of the hands have to be up. Secondly is the thumb position. The thumb position has to be on the side. But there's another point to this. If you think about your thumb pad and if you think about the drumstick like this is a clock face, that thumb pad has to be at around 10 and 2 o'clock. You can think of like driver's ed. So, the left-hand thumb pad is around 2 o'clock, somewhere between 1 and 2 o'clock. Over here, your right-hand thumb pad, somewhere between 11 and 10 o'clock. It depends on the student's hand, but that thumb pad has to be up there. What that does, if you think about thumb, first finger, second finger, third finger, fourth finger, we call it T1234. There's a teeny tiny gap in here called the T1 gap. You want that gap basically closed. It's not tight, but you want it closed. What you don't want is to have it wide open like this because all of a sudden you have to use different muscles to get control. What we're using here for control is just our hand shape. So again, back of the hand up. Thumb is on the side. The pad of the thumb is at 10 or 2 o'clock, depending upon which um, hand you're using. The back fingers back here, I like to call, are present around the drumstick. They are there. They are touching the stick. There are times where it might move in your hand, but they're touching around the stick. So, back of the hand up, thumb on the side. Thumb pad, 10 to 2 o'clock. Back of the hands are up. When you have both sticks together, it kind of forms this triangle. You don't want to get too bent out of shape about exactly what angle that triangle is. It's just a, a triangle there. And the way you can keep that there is the tips of the sticks are, if you imagine you had a 25 cents, they would be on the edges of that quarter. But this is your basic hand shape. So again, when you're talking with your students, elbows relaxed and in. The angle here and here are just straight and relaxed. Back of the hand up, thumb on the side, 
thumb pad 10 and 2 o'clock. The T1 gap is closed and these back fingers here are present around the stick. The tips of the stick are, you're in a triangle, they're about a quarter width apart. And the last thing that you have to remember is that it's all about hand shape, it's not about tension. In fact, even though this is universally known as matched grip, we like to really call it control position because sometimes grip means we start to squeeze too hard. C control position is that at any time, someone should be able to pull that stick out of your hand. That's how loose it is. Thank you.